What's going on everybody? This video we're going to talk about how you can connect to your Node.js backend from a React frontend. React also uses JavaScript, which is quite nice. You only have to worry about one language, but there is quite the learning curve for React. So if you want to know all the juicy details, you can check out my React full series on YouTube. It's like 20 hours and I'll get you going in the right direction. But we're going to start with the starter repo from that series. So you can clone it, you can use some of the code for your project, and it'll give you the essentials to start working with a backend from the front end of your application. This will allow us to interact with the customers in our API, but we're gonna have it in a nice visual web page with buttons and inputs and all that good stuff. So check out that series. I'll try to remember to drop a link down below in the comment section and the description right next to the sponsored link, which is ultra edit for this series. So shout out to them for supporting this series. That is a fully customizable text editor that you can use for your coding projects. So that is what we've been using for this series. And if you want to get that, you can get it from the link down below. All right. So here is my GitHub account. You can go to my repos and you can search react. Hot dang, there it is. So what we'll do is we will take this repo. You can grab that URL. You can clone this somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. What we'll do is we'll just clone it here inside of documents. It'll be a sibling folder to the customers. So we'll say git clone, paste that web address. There we, what in the heck? I don't want all that junk. There we go. So that will clone into this repo. And now what we can do is we can explore this repo and see what's in it. So the main thing in here is the source code is in the source folder. And inside of source, we are going to have pages. And inside of pages, we are going to have this customers. This is the file that we're going to take a look at, which is going to have the information about connecting to the customer's API. So go ahead and open this in whatever editor you are using, but from this terminal here, what we can do is we can actually say npm install, which is going to install any of the dependencies for this project. Once those are installed, we can say npm run start. This will open localhost 3000 in the web browser. Now this is the same port that we had our Node.js, running in. So we will need to change the port on one of these. If you try to start your React application when your Node.js application is already running, it might ask you if you want to start it on another port. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the port on our Node.js application so we don't have to run into this issue again. So we did that in earlier videos using the environment variable, really simple. So over in .env, I'm just gonna change this to 3005. You can really use whatever you want and then npm run start, and I'll just confirm it starts on 3005. So there we go. When you launch your application, it should look something like this, and we can head over to the customers page. Here are our customers. Now with whatever browser you are using, you should be able to right click, inspect, and there will be a network tab, which will allow you to take a look at the network traffic, including API requests, which can help you find any issues. You can also find issues in the console as well. So if you go to the console, you might see errors here. So this network error has to do with cores, cross origin requests. Basically the TLDR of that is that we're on localhost 3000. Our server is actually on localhost 3000 and five. And the server is like, yo, these are from different origins. They're coming from different URLs and it's going to block those requests by default, which can help protect your backend from malicious requests. But we can temporarily disable this or allow specific origins such as localhost 3000 to make requests to the backend. To do this from the backend, what we will do is we will say npm install cores. This is a package which will allow us to easily set these settings up. Once that is installed, you will import this here. So const course require course. And it's really easy to use. All you have to do is say app.use and pass in a call to this course constant we created. This will change the general functionality of our backend such that we don't have to worry about these cores issues. 
So you can learn more about configuring your course middleware if you wish. Just go ahead and research the course package. But I'm just going to stick with this very basic example, which allows cross-origin requests to our backend. Now that we have that set up, we will run our server again. So npm run start. You can open another instance of ultra edit with the command palette control shift P and then allow multiple instances, which you can then check and then open whatever you want inside of ultra edit. Inside of the source directory where we define our pages, we also have this shared file, which is where I decided to put the URL. So currently it's localhost 8000. We'll just want to set that backend port to something that we're actually using in this case 3005 and save that. And there you have it. Our page is now working. It is getting the customers from the database. So you can go into any of these and take a look such as this one here. This page is currently not working. So we're going to talk about why in a moment, but the list of all of our customers are working. Let's test this one out. Add a customer. Test, test, hit add, and take a look at that. We can even add data to our database. Let's go ahead and do a refresh just to make sure that data actually persists and you can see it's still there. Now you can still work with the API directly if you just want to, you know, check the data, make sure things are looking good, um, you know, to make sure nothing was messed up in the front end of things. And you can see I've been testing around with some junk data here, but yours might be a little bit more clean. Now the functionality to make that home page for the customers work comes from the customers page inside of the source file. The reason the individual customer is not working just has to do with the ID because if you scroll through here, we are passing to slash customers the customer.id. But coming back from MongoDB, it is actually an underscore ID. So if you add that underscore there and save it, an individual customer page should now work. And you can see the name and the industry pops up. Now we should have that full functionality. So we can say John Cena industry is, I don't know, wrestling, uh, being invisible, and we can save. Okay, so if something went wrong, just go ahead and check the network tab and see what's going on. So we'll head over to the network. We'll try to save this data. We're getting a 404 not found. And this actually just comes down to the request method, which I had in the front end defined as post. So what you can do is just alter the request to be a put method, since that is what our backend is expecting. So that functionality can be found in customer.js page, and the method is post. Let's just go ahead and change this to put. Now we should be able to change this data and have it save. So being invisible, hit save. And nothing shows up here, which is another problem we're going to address here in just a second. But if you do a refresh, you can see that the data actually did go to the database and was saved. So when we go back to our list of customers, you can see it's saved as John Cena. So the problem was when we saved it, it just showed a blank screen instead of showing the new updated data. And this has to do with actually our API design. So from our API, if you take an ID, you can get that individual customer and we could change that data with a put and let's just go ahead and copy this customer data and we will include that in the body. We'll go raw JSON and paste that here. If we update this, the returned data on a success is an updated count one. And what the front end code is actually going to do if you look through the code is it's going to look for the updated customer data and it's not going to get that. So it doesn't know what to do with this and the screen is blank. So we're gonna talk a bit more on another way of updating data in the next video. But before we end this video, I just wanted to go over a little bit more of the React stuff so you can have a better idea of how it's working and you can edit it yourself. If it's too much, you can go through the React series as mentioned at the beginning of this video. The main important thing to understand is that pages are generally tied to URL structures whereas components are little pieces inside of pages that can be reused. The starting location really is index.js, which will then basically immediately invoke app.js. So this is where the bulk of the starting code is. So inside of app.js, you can scroll through here. Don't worry too much about the refresh tokens and stuff for logging in. That's just for some basic auth. 
The thing you should worry about now is the routes. So these are the different URLs and the different components that will be hit when you visit those URLs. So when you visit a customer, it's going to render the customer's page. If you do customer's colon ID, then it'll visit an individual customer. So then you can go into that page. So go into source, pages, and then whichever page you're interested in, such as customers. And inside of here, you can scroll up to the top and the main things are going to be use effect and in this scenario, a custom use fetch hook. And this is what's going to actually make that web request. So we define a URL here, scrolling through, we invoke use fetch, define what method we want and any headers we want. And that is how we make a web request. The call to use fetch is actually going to return a function which we called request. So we can then invoke request inside of this use effect thing. So what use effect does is it'll execute once when the page loads based on this value here, which is called the dependency array, which is currently empty, which says, hey, we want to execute this use effect one time when the page loads. Now, clearly, if you've never done React, this is probably like WTF, this makes no sense, but I agree. So use effect executes once, and that is just going to execute request. What is request? Well, it actually comes from use fetch, which you can jump into hooks, and then use fetch if you want the details of, but it's basically just complicated code to make a web request. So you can see fetch here with the URL, the method, headers, and body, and what happens after it's done. So far, so good. When this is done, the data variable is going to contain the customer's data. So we can later on in our code use that. So down here we can say customers.map. So for each customer, we want to display some HTML, specifically a link to that individual customer with the customer's ID. So the individual customer is the parameter for this loop. You should probably understand a little bit about mapping in JavaScript. So this is kind of like the iteration variable. Each iteration is going to be talking about a different customer, which is how we can make general code to discuss customers and it's going to substitute in for each customer ID. So for every single customer, we're going to have a div with that link. So far, so good. And then we have this add customer component, which you can explore inside of the components if you wish. So that's kind of like the basics of how the page structure works. It's going to be fairly similar for an individual customer. Once you understand those themes, it's pretty similar across all the different pages. So you can go up here. It looks like this one might actually be a little bit different because it's doing the fetch inline here instead of using that custom use fetch hook. Either way is fine. So yeah, that is the introduction. Here is the update customer function, which we're actually going to go into in more detail for the back end side of things in the next video. Hopefully this video is helpful so far. I know this was a ton of information and not really a comprehensive React video, but I just wanted to kind of give you a shortcut to having a functional full stack application so you can see the end result. Then if you want more, I've given you the resources to make that happen. You can continue watching this series for the back end, and you have that full React series on my channel as well. Thank you and stay tuned for the next video. Peace out.